Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Ryan Kazemi and uh, glad to have you at our complex case discussion series. We're coming to you live from Bethesda, Maryland, uh, from Facial or Dental Forum Studio. Um, and I'm delighted to have all of you with us. Um, today we have a uh, very interesting case that we're going to be discussing. And my guest is a good friend and a colleague, uh, Dr. Uh, Mariano Pollack, who is a prosthodontist in Gainesville, Virginia. Uh, hello there. How are you nice doing? Nice to see you. Good to see you too. All right, wonderful. Thank you for being here. Of course. Um, uh, Mariano is a graduate of the prosthodontic program from uh, University of Minnesota. He's been practicing uh, in Virginia since 2000. Uh, we had a pleasure of meeting each other, uh, uh, I guess, a couple of years ago. And I've really uh, come quite fond of your, your knowledge, your skills. Um, you're an educator, you're a practitioner, as I am, and, um, and really exciting to have you here. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. All right, very good. So uh, the case that we're going to discuss today is a patient that we both have uh, seen and have uh, treated. So uh, we are going to uh, share... Uh, this particular patient and describe the complexity of this case. So let me go ahead and uh, get into this patient's case. I'm going to present uh, the history of this patient. Um, this is a patient that came to us in 2020 with the complaints of chronic pain around implants number 19 and 20. Uh, the history is that these implants were placed initially in 2006. Um, according to her report, there was a gradual bone loss over the next 10 years since these implants were placed. Uh, there were two attempted bone grafting procedures uh, to uh, try to restore the bone loss around the implants, uh, but it was not successful. Ultimately, because of the pain and the bone loss that she was experiencing, the implants were removed in 2016. And according to a report, there was some bone grafting done to restore the ridge. Um, about six months later, she had the implants replaced. And again, she reported pain around the implants really kind of over the next three years after the placement, after the placement of the second time. So when she initially presented to me in 2019, uh, her chief complaint was continued pain um, around the implants, uh, which had not resolved in spite of the previous treatments. Uh, her previous team had suggested a bone graft to try to correct the defect. Uh, as you can see in the uh, center x-ray, um, she did go back to her team that initially did the treatment. Uh, they raised a the flap and attempted a bone graft to try to restore the vertical deficiency. She came back to us in July of 2020 again with continued pain and discomfort. And she advised me that the bone graft that had been attempted did not work and it had failed. And this is the um, presentation in 2020. So that is the history. On clinical examination, uh, the restorations were removed and a couple of healing abutments were placed uh, on the implants by her previous team. And when she first presented, there was a very distinct pain on palpation on the lingual aspect of the implants. Uh, there was quite a bit of inflammation on the lingual aspect. Uh, no perilence, however, uh, bleeding on probing. And of course, from what you can see, there was complete lack of um, any keratinized gingiva. So the comb beam CT scan showed um, 
existing root canal treatment on uh, tooth number 21, number 19 and 20 implants, fairly well centered in the alveolar bone, uh, but obviously we can see the advanced bone loss. And this is more evident uh, from this perspective. Um, number 19 with more normal bone on the distal aspect, but gradually diminishing uh, epically, uh, hence the vertical deficiency. So here we are, Mariano. Um, this is um, the presentation of a patient, chronic pain, uh, obviously multiple surgeries and procedures since 2006. And uh, certainly there is uh, clear evidence that her pain and discomfort uh, maybe due to this inflammatory process, there is no question there is peri-implantitis. But uh, what are your thoughts? What are your, uh, what are your thoughts from this initial uh, presentation? You know, when it's, uh, it's, it's interesting how sometimes uh, implant dentistry can be straightforward, and sometimes you have a situation like this that may not be uh, per se aesthetically demanding, but, uh, but the patient is having discomfort and, and it's like a conundrum. So what do we do? Do we try, do we try to uh, heroically try to uh, vertically augment that bone and, and get you know, a, a, a better result and, and maintain what she has? Or are we better off going back to the drawing board and, and removing the implants, uh, preparing the site in a better way and then start all over, uh, you know, uh, starting from, from, from the foundation up? Uh, this to me is perhaps the, the, the most challenging aspect in, in, in implant dentistry because, you know, when, uh, when you have to, this is more challenging, in fact, to me than, 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 an, than something in the aesthetic zone uh, because it's, re it's really, there's no easy answer to, to, to this type of cases for me. Um, and, yeah. and again, it's, it's, it, it requires a lot of conversation and discussion with the patient and patient management, I think is, as, as you and I have discussed in the past, is, is critical here. Um, and, and the whole team coming together, right? Restorative and, and surgical, what are we gonna do? Right. I think it, what's interesting from her history, um, and, I've, and I've heard this from patients who've had chronic periimplantitis or, or some experiences where they report, um, immediate pain after the implant placement, which never resolved. Like in a way after the post-surgical uh, healing, they continue to have discomfort and pain. And, and I, I wonder in those situations, if there's already a inflammatory process or early, uh, early peri-implantitis already happening, uh, hence, describe, hence resulting in this uh, you know, prolonged pain after an implant procedure which we all know should not last. Usually uh, placement right. of an implant, uh, there is some tenderness, soreness for a few days. And, and that's what we, we expect. Yeah, yeah, the, the, certainly um, a consideration. And the other, as, as you brought up, you know, looking at those uh, photographs you, you have there, um, obviously yeah, the, the, the lack of keratinized tissue on, on the lingual side, uh, I think you know, that's, that's also a, a, a big deal there. Um, making a making making a, a, a challenging situation more challenging so now the question is um i think you know we have to think about what were the possible causes um was it the implant position um if we kind of look at the span of the edential space between number 18 and 21 uh, there seems to be a larger space uh, than just a molar and a premolar uh, the implants were placed, of course, where they at, but was that part of the problem? Um, is it possible that uh, there was some potential access for hygiene uh, challenges or issues? Was that part of the causality? Um, what, um, you know, certainly cement uh, induced periimplantitis, uh, or perhaps just patient healing uh, in general. Uh, I think, you know, we cannot really, of course, tell for sure what the, the, the cause of the periimplantitis was, but I think uh, these are some of the thoughts in terms of what may have contributed. 
probably add, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, to the list, uh, the, 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 the lack of, uh, of protection from no keratinized gingiva there as well, no? As, as, as a compounding factor. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, uh, more often than not, especially with thin bridge um, situations, um, especially if there is multiple procedures and grafting procedures, we continue to lose the width of the keratinized gingiva. And of course, implants can be placed. And if we uh, don't develop the soft tissue or the keratinized gingiva, uh, irritation, localized irritation and uh, plaque retention uh, is always uh, becomes an issue. And I think we all have experienced that. Right. So I think the problem list that we um, have is of course, chronic advanced peri-implantitis. Um, there is vertical bone loss in number 20. Uh, and to some degree on the mesial aspect of number 19. Uh, there's clearly lack of attached gingiva on the lingual aspect with uh, marked gingival inflammation. Uh, it's definitely a very thin tissue biotype. Uh, and that could be a red flag in, in any case, but specifically in her case. But the other two things that I um, also maybe don't talk about as much is a multiply operated site that has a different physiology, different biology than a fresh area when we do implant uh, therapy. Uh, and I want to kind of ask your experience and opinion about that. And also last but not least, uh, the patient's emotional state. Uh, I can tell you that when she came for a consultation, uh, she was in tears, um, years of uh, pain, years of not having a solution to the problems that she was having. I think there was a very clear sense of frustration, anxiety, and uh, sort of very debilitating for, for an individual to experience that uh, with, with no resolution. Um, and I think those last two is something that we don't really talk about very often, but I think they're important factors just as much as everything else that we mentioned. Well, but particularly here, I think you, you hit the, the nail on the head there, because uh, if we look at the x-ray, uh, but the patient was not in pain. Let's say the, you know, the patient had her restorations there and she was not uncomfortable. We see that bone loss, but the patient is comfortable and, and, you know, and, and functioning, and we don't see progressive bone loss. Would that be you know, a reason for, for concern or retreatment? And you know, we could argue that let, let's keep things going while, she, well, while things are functional and she can maintain. But the issue is her, the, the discomfort, obviously, and her emotional state that makes this case what it is, right? So how do you, how do you support the patient? How do you manage a patient that, 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 that comes to us in, in, with, with this, with this uh, her own little you know, uh, personal um, horror story as to, you know, I came in, I was told I would get two implants, get my, my teeth and, and be done. And here she is, uh, what, 10, 13 years later, uh, still, you know, back to back to the start, uh, and to the to the other point you made, I, I, I every time every time you go back, I think you know I don't do surgery, but uh, every time you go back, in my experience, to to a site that already had surgery done, uh, the vascularity is unlikely to be the same. More scarring is likely, as as we all know, and and that just again complicates things uh, further. Unfortunately, it makes it more challenging. 